right guys, this is the final reveal uh, for my entry into the Hawker Harrier 50th Anniversary Buddy Build actually which started back on the 28th of December and I think it finished around about the 31st of March or April, I can't remember, so I'm about two or three months behind on my completion date I'm sorry if it's a bit dark but I thought this was going to be the best angle to get this actually if I pull that down a bit you can see a bit better although it's casting a few shadows um, as you can see my entry is completely done it is the Kinetic uh, 148th C uh, Harrier FRS one which you can see in the background there um, can't say it was one of the easiest builds I've ever done as regards an aircraft because it taxed me, it pushed me, I had parts going missing, fit issues with it, um, there was supposed to be holes where there weren't on the instructions, uh, you name it, it had problems. But, although it's taken me the best part of nearly five and a half months to build, I have got there and she is now done and I am very very pleased at getting it done and in fact it's a case of phew <laughs> so I'm getting all my other builds I have planned um, yeah the actual base uh, was just an ordinary I think a four photo mount um, along with a base of foam board both of those I actually got from Hobbycraft in Reading um, and I'll just cut to size on the actual foam board. I've got some more actually for future dios as well. Um, wasn't cheap in getting it, I have to say, because um, as we well know, Hobbycraft aren't the cheapest. Um, I mean, the kit itself is around about £35. Uh, the detail on it is fantastic, and it does build into a beautiful kit, as you can see here. So in that regard, its accuracy and detail is superb, but in regards to fit, instructions, mm, that's a different matter. Um, this kit has been fighting me all the way, to be honest with you, and it was even fighting me today when I was trying to get it completed. Uh, because unfortunately, I lost the two back club hub lights, uh, which isn't a big deal, because I mean they were tiny anyway on the back of the tail and one of the landing lights on the nose wheel in fact both of them went pinging off so I ended up having to cannibalize an English electric camera kit which is the old airfix kit and scratch building the actual front um, nose gear and landing light and using that which I did and it did actually come out pretty well although you can't see it on the video um, I did use some aftermarket on this kit uh, mainly believe it or not although the detail in the cockpit was good it wasn't brilliant um i used the edward aftermarket cockpit set for believe it or not the tamiya kit um and used parts from that for the seat belts and the buckles on the actual uh, martin baker seat um which was fitted to the kinetic kit um did a little bit of chopping and ch churning and god knows what to get it to fit and it did um so i was very happy with that i mean the general part of the build that was the easiest was actually put in the cockpit and the engine um compressor blades together and that was fine but after that hmm, fit issue after fit issue after fit issue um you name it i had gaps in the kit um things didn't fit where it was supposed to like the nozzle setup was bad um, the instructions told you to do it one way when in fact it was the other um, so that was bad uh, so look out for that guys if you've got this kit in fact I know one of the guys on the group has just started his is actually um, started on a copy section he's actually fitted a pilot aftermarket pilot on it and I must admit mate that looks fantastic so good start but I do warn you mate you're gonna have issues with this and you're going to have to do your research on this aircraft because I had to just as a backup to find where stuff went and was supposed to be placed including decals and the stencils uh, because the only thing I did find with this is on the instruction sheet they're not very specific where all the stencils go and there's about over a hundred of them 
and that virtually took me two weeks to put the stencils down before I put the main decals down which only took me about an hour and a half <laughs> uh, yeah so yeah I mean in some parts they, the kit fits well in others it's a nightmare uh, especially on the air intakes here um, I had to do some sanding and dry fitting and god knows what to get it to fit to the main airframe um, Canopy was fine, that fitted perfectly, uh, no problems on that score, and um, fine, um, no problems at all. I mean, I primed it in UMP Prime, well, I didn't actually prime it in UMP Prime, I used, um, what was it, um, Autotech Car Primer, because I was impatient to get this done. Um, it did bed down extremely well. Um, and I know Halfords has got a similar sort of one and that beds down beautifully as I've done with aircraft builds in the past. I say I was going to use Star Res, but to be honest with you, time was an essence and I wanted to get this build done. And uh, yeah, so I ended up using that instead for this for this build. Um, yeah, that was good. And it was actually my first time I used Mr. Hobby Aqueous for the extra dark sea grey and that bedded down beautifully. Uh, I've never known a paint bed down so beautifully and dry so quickly um, in all my life and I would say they have the slight edge over to me of critics and I normally rave about them. So I think from now on in I may well be getting a few of the old Mr. Hobby Aqueous um, acrylic colours in my paint range. Um, they do pong a bit, but once they're dry, that gate odor goes. Um, but I've got a um, little mini spray booth I use to get the fumes out of the room. So it's not a problem. Um, you have to say, I was very impressed with that. And then obviously after that, um, I didn't actually assemble any sub assemblies such as the outriggers on or any of the nav lights on until the very end um, including the actual weapons load for the um, uh, sidewinder missiles uh, which was the Sea Harris primary defence um, as well as its Aiden cannon gun underneath um, uh, but as I say, um, I think what I'll do if I ever build another Sea Harrier is I will leave the wing tanks off because it was a bit awkward to airbrush in some occasions um, and try and get the decals on. I didn't put the whole lot of the stencils on because in some places it would just have been in, well, impossible to put them on the other side of the tank so I just left it on the outer part. And... With it now being glued to the base, you wouldn't see a lot anyway. Um, I did think about putting flight tags on, but I thought myself, well, no, this was ready for operation. And judging by some of the actual reference photos and some of the BBC news footage, they, they didn't have them on a lot of the time because they were on standby continuously <clears throat> with their um, cap air patrols. Um, yeah, as I say, this, this is... This has been a bit of a bitch to build, and it's bit my arse on occasions. Um, I, would I get another kinetic kid? Not in a hurry. Let's just put it like that. Not in a hurry. And I've spoken to other modelers, and they've had similar experiences with kinetic. The detail on them and the way they build up eventually is beautiful. Don't get me wrong. But I have to say, in regard to basically the construction and the instructions, it's got to be something to be desired. Um, there were times when I felt like throwing this kit out the bin, out into the bin, but I didn't. I persevered because, in all in all, essence, it's not only a challenge because this kit has been a bit of a challenge in, at times over the last few months, and I've relished it in some respects and hated it in others, but. It was more in essence to the tribute to all the boys that actually fought in the Falklands and more essentially the guys who never came back. <coughs> and also a tribute to a late reporter who died of cancer about five or six years ago and that was uh, the BBC's Brian Hamrahan who was actually based on HMS Hermes. 
And there's one thing that always sticks in my mind about one of his news reports, and that was when he did the first news report on the very first air raid on Port Stanley. And his words were, I can't tell you how many Harriers took part in the raid, but I counted them all out and I counted them all back. That always sticks in my mind. And this is partly a tribute to Brian as well. Um, as well as some of the other news reporters, more essentially Brian though. Um, he was a great news reporter, always at the front line, more essentially known for his reports from the Falklands. Um, and he will never be forgotten for those words, because they essence the actual summing up of the Falklands War and the Sea Harrier itself. I mean, the actual aircraft stems back, well, as you see, 50 years to when the P-1127 first had it tethered flight at Dunsfold Aerodrome in 1968 or 7 and uh, then from then on in it went into the Royal Air Force's inventory as the Harrier GR1 in 1969 and it was a well beater of an aircraft it obviously was updated around about the late 1970s with the laser rangefinder to the GR3 standard and then obviously it was developed as a shipborne fighter, which you see here is the Harrier FRS-1. Um, first flew in around about 19, I think 77 or 78. And had strengthened undercarriage, a heightened nose and Ferranti uh, uh, nose radar. And look down, shoot down capacity. Um, and had an enhanced wing and weapon load. Um, I don't know what the range of the Sea Harrier was, but it was quite vast with refueling pods that could be attached to the side of the actual fuselage. And um, it replaced, um, uh, was used basically on the new through deck cruisers of the Invincible class, which I'm sad to say there are none left, even the last one, HMS Illustrious, uh, despite being promised that she would be preserved as a museum piece, ended up on her way down to a scrapyard in India along with the uh, two sisters Art Royal and Invincible and she is no more sadly. Um, I think it's a travesty because they were a part of our naval history more essentially for the Falklands War and even HMS Intrepid and Fearless were not safe from the scrapman's torch um, and they were the flagships of the fleet well apart from Hermes and um, I've heard the Hermes um, was promised to be a museum piece in India because she is the oldest surviving shipborne operational ship of her time and was recently retired only this March um, from the Indian Navy. Fingers crossed that we can all hope she doesn't come under the scrap man's torch because she is the last of the traditional flat top carriers. And it would be a great, great tragedy if she ended up in the scrap man's um, torch. And I hope that doesn't come about. I really, really pray it doesn't. Because she was essentially the flagship of the actual Falklands fleet. So there you go. Fingers crossed, eh, guys? Let's just hope she doesn't meet that fate. And that someone somewhere along the line is able to raise the funds to bring her back to this country and preserve her as a national monument to all those guys who made a sacrifice down in the Falklands for the Falkland Islands 35 years ago and uh, she served us well and, went, and then she served the Indian Navy well as to well so let's hope she doesn't meet the fate of her previous sisters so we shall see anyway getting back to what I was saying the actual Sea Harrier I've modelled it as is one of the two aircraft that Lieutenant Commander Sharkey Ward, who is the figure de depicted on the actual uh, diorama here, made from a company called Ares. And the detail on that is absolutely fantastic. Um, I didn't have any fit issues. In fact, it didn't need filling. But the detail on the figure is absolutely fantastic. And I've even added his beard. <laughs> Believe it or not. Um... Unfortunately, I can't zoom in to show you like I did in my old camera, um, but rest assured you'll see the photographs in some of the stills I've actually got on my Facebook page of the channel 
and where I've posted on various numerous Facebook forums. So there you go. Um, and it's also a tribute to him because he was the actual uh, commanding officer of the flight um, based on HMS Invincible during the course of Operation Corporate in the Falklands War. Um, he was one of the few who did survive. Um, I think three were lost. Uh, three of the pilots were lost to us. I may be wrong. Um, but he ended up having ten kills during the course of the Falklands War. Um, two, one was Bukara, I think one was a Delta Dagger, which I've actually depicted on the kills on the actual aircraft. And his third kill was an RAF, was an Argentine Hercules on its way back from Port Stanley. Um, and he shot down uh, the aircraft, killing all the crew. Um, none of them survived. Um, as apparently it was on its way out to refuel some aircraft in an attack against HMS Invincible. So, that, that he stopped that. If you want to check out his history, um, you can actually look him up on Wikipedia. And um, the actual aircraft was one of the ones that was depicted in the kit, which I actually managed to do a bit of research on. And this was the very aircraft that he shot the Hercules down in. So there you go. And it's indicating, the base is indicating that it was on HMS Invincible. Now, what I use for the weathering process on this kit, um, I basically use Flory's Dark Dirt Wash to pop up some of the actual panel eyes and the detail to give it that grubby look. And uh, on the actual undercarriage I used... Um, a mixture of uh, UMP products um, for their washes on that and also the Tamiya um, uh, enamel liner as well um, which actually really popped the detail up nice and gave it that grubby look on the undercarriage and the undercarriage base sadly I've actually got unfortunately I've glued this on the base now because it wasn't sitting properly uh, because of the outriggers and I tried sanding everything down but I didn't want to sand it too down so I ended up pushing it down with a bit of super glue and it's on there forever now um, the actual deck well I masked that off I primed that with UMP primer in grey and then went over it with field green to give it the deck colour, which was the nearest source I could sort of get. And then uh, masked it off, painted the white down with first off to me, but I found I was short. Uh, so I ended up using uh, the Ravel white and then masked off the middle and sprayed it originally. Um, I think it was German Panzer Grey, but I found that the colours were incorrect and it should have been a black. So I masked it off again, put the Tamiya black down, unmasked it all and it looked perfect. Um, the deck marking is actually extra decals from the actual kit itself, which I used. Um, so that's that. And then afterwards, um, I basically just went over in light layers on the deck to obviously enhance what was exhaust stains because I mean these decks used to get absolutely filled with God knows how much muck and obviously I had stains from where the uh, Rolls-Royce Pegasus engines were going across the deck constantly. Um, so I sort of reenacted that as a bit of weathering really and then just basically matte coated it down with Humbrol matte coat which did go down pretty well um, and then the actual kit itself once I've actually weathered it I then clear coated it put the decals down which were aftermarket which were beautifully went down beautifully uh, admittedly it was a bit of a nightmare to putting all those stencils on which took me the best part of nearly for a fortnight when I was able to get time at the bench and then the actual decals themselves only actually took about an hour and a half now where it comes with the air filter um, doors on the side of the air intakes, um, I did try fitting the decals that go onto the actual individual doors, but oh, they just wouldn't fit. So I just left it as it was. And to be honest, you wouldn't have seen much anyway. 
So after I'd done that, I put another clear coat down, dark dirt wash went down, wiped that off with a bit of water and God knows how many cotton buds. Came up ideal, I weathered the undercarriage, um, obviously when it was separate, and the actual undercarriage bay and the nozzles as well. Um, I kept them separate. And I used the dark, to me, a dark iron on that to give it that sort of dirty, dark, sort of iron heated look. And also on the exhaust um, shrouds on the side of the actual back exhaust nozzles. And then once that was done, um, what was the next process? The next process, I then dull coated the whole kit and then chipped it, as you see there with a little sponge and some chipping paper and then overwinning it with a brush to give it that sort of weathered look like they used to get in the South Atlantic. Obviously with the sea salt and everything, you know, because obviously it chipped the paint away. And obviously where there were engineers working on the engine deck and working over the wings, I'll just put various chips here and there everywhere, you know, just to give it that little worn look, as it were, and battle-weary look. Um... Unfortunately, I snapped off the kit's pitot tube, so I ended up you get ordering an aftermarket metal one, again, by Ares. It's got that fitted, perfect. Um, and then obviously painted over it and weathered it, etc. That was done. And then once all the matte coat was put down on the second time, um, I then removed all the masking from their canopies unfortunately in the process I took some of the decals off on the actual canopy here the back part um, which I couldn't avoid unfortunately I don't know why they didn't stick on but they did um, that's the way it goes um, but anyway got them glued into place with super glue um, I was going to put the ejector marks for the little fuse charges in the canopy on but they didn't actually fit they were too oversized and i did try a hand of well pre-hand painting but mm, that was a nightmare so i ended up getting the ump to get it all off and clean the canopy again so that was a bit of luck um what was the final process oh yeah and then last night i just painted all the lights up all the nav lights up either side of the wing and obviously on the bottom of the where the air brake is and up the top here on the engine bay applied them with some canopy glue which i've got here formula 560 which is like pva but it's designed for canopies so i use that put them into place oh sorry um, and then the final process was just basically to get the ladder assembled, which I did, which was from, I'm trying to think, Bregan. Um, so you can look it up. It's the 148th ladder for the Hawker Hunter and the Harrier. Um, so that was ideal, and it is ideal because that's the very ladder they actually did use from the photo sources I had. And obviously... I noticed in some photographs during the fall, well, they were heavily chipped where everybody was walking up and down on numerous operations, obviously with the sea salt effects as well. So anyway, got that uh, primed and assembled, primed and painted. I used the uh, Stana Res white and then went over it with Tamiya red. And then once that was dry, I basically chipped it as the same technique as I'd used on the actual kit. And then matte coated it with Tester's Dull Coat. And that was that job done and fitted her with super glue onto it last night. And I'll just check the positioning obviously from photo sources. So that is the correct position, as you can see there. Um, and then the very final thing was to basically apply the figure to the base, which I did with super glue. And I used Tamiya paints and, again, flory washes for the figure, as well as um, dry brushing it just to enhance the features. Um, and then he was done because obviously I wanted to know where I roughly was going to position the Sea Harrier uh, for in, in coincidence with him. And obviously he's got a map there, so he's reading his map. And I don't know if you notice from the steels, I've actually painted the outline of the Falkland Islands on the map. So there you go. 
it may or may not notice. Um, and then what was the final process I did with this today? Um, it was just basically repairing it because I, was, I, I had a bit of a nightmare with the landing lights. They wouldn't, well, they fitted, but the main landing light kept, I kept losing or it went into the inside bay and got stuck to that. And I got it out numerous times and on the eighth occasion I lost it. So I had to cannibalize an old Airfix uh, 148 Lightning F1, or was it F2, and use one of the lights of that, cut it to shape, cut it and sand it to shape, and paint it um, first of all with silver and then over it with the medium sea grey, just give it the enhanced look that it's got a. Um, I don't know where you won't be able to see it in the video, but. Um, the reflective background within then the glass and then obviously the final process was basically applying all the undercarriage doors which I did and then the final final thing I did was basically put a clear coat on all the nav lights situated on the aircraft and then I did a few shots obviously of the actual kit and then basically mounted it onto the base along with a figure um, with super glue so that it wouldn't get damaged and then I'll just use some canopy polish which I've got years and years and years ago and it's getting towards the end of it. I'll put it at uh, Model Engineering Exhibition and the late Ted Taylor bought, um, who was a member of the IPMS, I don't know if you remember everybody remembers Ted Taylor. Well, he passed away about a few years ago and he actually recommended this to me at the time. And I am going back a few fair years and it's only just getting towards the end of its life. And I put a little bit of that on the canopy and it's just enhanced the glass on the canopy. It really buffs it up nicely. So there you go. And that was basically the kit done. Um, and that was it really. And that means that this project is finally at an end and as I say it's been a challenge it's bit my arse on a few occasions um, but I persevered I got through it because in all essence it's a tribute to all the boys that fought in the Falklands War and those that didn't come back and obviously the late Brian Hamran who I quoted in this video and uh, I want to thank Martin Lamont international British scale modeler uh, for letting me take part in this buddy build so and I thank you for all your support out there guys and all your help in sending me spare parts to get this build done unfortunately I forgot your names I do apologize um, and I want to thank all the guys who've helped me out on this build and as I say for Martin for letting me take part and all his encouragement and support so there you go that's the end of my final reveal for the hawker harrier 50th anniversary buddy build um photos are on the i think is it the harrier modeling page it's been renamed now on facebook and various other facebook forums um i think i'll probably be posting this on google as well so that's it guys um it's been a long process nearly five months but this now I can put to bed and sit along my side my other builds. Um, as I say, it's my first aircraft build in a while. I'm pretty proud of it, I have to say. And judging by your remarks, I'm, I thank you all. And a bit humbled as well. Um, it's been a challenge. And uh, it's a challenge I've relished. It's a challenge I managed to get through despite all the setbacks I've had, even up to last night. So that's it. Anyway, that's it for now, guys. Uh, leave your comments in the comments column. And thank you again. Um, and that's it. So until next time, get kick crazy. Happy modeling. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye.